Welcome into Five Wide Fantasy. Today's video, more draft strategy, picks five to eight. Um, well documented on the show if you've been watching for a while. Uh, we don't love this spot. Um, we spent a few hours today mock yeah. drafting, trying to figure out what the fuck we want to do with this area. <laughs> but have no fear. We have found the best draft strategy on planet Earth when it comes to picks five to eight. Literally um, the only strategy. Yeah. Um, if you guys are new and you haven't heard already, uh, we are doing a giveaway. Jersey of your choice and $100 of site credit on Owner's Box Fantasy. All you have to do, subscribe to the channel and send me either a message in our Discord uh, with a screenshot of your subscription or send us a DM on Twitter, Owner's Box on Twitter, and you will be entered to win. We will announce a winner of that shortly, probably uh, late next week is what I'm, I'm looking at. But anyways, if you guys subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, let's talk a little bit. We'll go through each position. Um, you know, in your drafts, you're going to see some of these these players we talk about move leading up to your draft day. Some players are going to be, or some other managers are going to reach on some guys they really like. Um, I had one league last year that this dude just loved Antonio Gibson so much. I think he took him at like pick six. It was insane. Oh, but in those scenarios, you could get some guys fall to you that we will like better. But we're going to give a number of options that way. You're not restricted to just a few players. Not a big deal, though. Um, so you, you'll be able to, f to find um, some guys you like. But generally, um, I found from this spot, I'm happy with um, the wide receiver position early on, I guess mm -hmm, I would say. For sure. Yeah, I think... I think we're both kind of in lockstep with the fact that we want a receiver in the first round if it's in the right spot. Like I think five to eight kind of works out well in that sense mm -hmm. because the first three running backs taken are most likely going to be, and the first three picks in your league are probably going to be Jonathan Taylor, Christian McCaffrey, and Derrick Henry and or Austin Eckler. So if that's the case, you'll definitely either get one of the good receivers um, between the five and eight pick. And then I think if not, we both kind of realize that um, if those receivers are gone, uh, Joe Mixon is a really good option in that spot as well. Yeah, yeah. Derek Henry is someone that could fall if people are yeah. are heavy wide receiver um, in the first four picks. If you do see Jefferson and Cup gone and you're at pick six, then yeah, you're you're going to see some better value at running back, and that'll leave your options open for the rounds two and three in terms of receiver. Uh, but that that kind of sums up round one yeah. and how that would look. Uh, there's not too much to get in on there in terms of um, it's early, it's still relatively early, so the, the options are pretty straightforward. Um, you get into round two. This is where I find in, with my, my picks between five to eight, I'm doing a lot of like hoping. I'm like, oh, this please this guy fall to yeah. me. And you kind of do that every pick you have. You're looking at someone, you're hoping they'll fall. But here, I I really find myself doing that. Two guys I'd really love if they fell to me would be Alvin Kamara and C.D. Lamb. You could be in a league where. People are concerned about will Alvin Kamara be suspended this year. I don't think that's going to yeah, happen, no. but that would help you if you were in picks five to eight. C. D. Lamb is another player that um, obviously is in, is lined up to see plenty of volume when you look at you know the Michael Gallup absence and this team throws the ball a ton. Uh, but realistically, if those two guys are gone, we're looking at guys like Aaron Jones and Debo Samuel available for you um, in these spots or in those spots there. Aaron Jones, to me, is a guy I really like A.J. Dillon this year. I think these two can be a, a significant 1A, 1A, like LaFleur had said this week. Um, but Jones is a guy that will give you 60-plus receptions, 150-plus carries, which is a formula of for eight of the last nine RB1s. you got to meet those metrics. So Jones is still a guy I'm, I'm happy to take in this middle part of the second. And then um, what are your thoughts on Nick Chubb? Because I think he's someone that could fall into this zone. Yeah, absolutely. I was just about to talk to running backs in this part for myself. Yeah, I think Chubb is definitely a viable option here. Like we, It doesn't seem like from Kareem Hunt demanding or requesting a trade if he's going to be as feature heavily featured in this uh, offense when the season starts. Right. Like I, I feel like he will be just because he's going to be there and he's still a really skilled player. But I still think Nick Chubb, you know, he's been great when he's been able to stay on the field. So if you're getting him in the middle of the second round, that's great. Um, one running back I would maybe reach on a little bit and he's just flying up ADP boards now is Saquon. Um, I like him in that spot, uh, depending, especially if you did take a receiver in the first round. Um, but if not, when I'm looking at receivers, um, I mean, there's not there's not a ton other than maybe Debo if he's there, which he probably will be. But Tyreek, I'm staying away from. I don't really like him there. I think he, for me, I, if I were to take him, he'd have to fall early in the third round. Yeah, like I would go like if if Mike Ev I would take Mike Evans before yeah. I'm taking Tyreek Hill. <laughs> yeah, That's Mike really the Evans, basis, yeah. and, Ty and Mike Evans is going a little bit later. Um, so that kind of takes Tyreek out of the conversation uh, for me as well. the The thing that I have though with 
with Chubb is that Chubb could see the vol like serious volume considering Deshaun Watson's absence. So he could be a guy that gives you a good floor. But again, in, your, in round two, you don't want to limit yourself to floor. You want to find upside. So I think, you know, Debo's that kind of player. Aaron Jones is that kind of player. Um, to me. So I think round two, those are the two guys we'd be mainly looking at. Yeah. I, we mentioned the two that we are hoping to fall for, uh, to fall, that fall to you. And then, you know, worst case scenario, you're looking at reaching on a Mike Evans or for you reaching on a Saquon, but I, yeah. I'm not really likely to do that or settling for a Nick Chubb. Uh, round three. So we've got um, a lot going on here. I'm one to look at wide receiver and prioritize looking at wide receiver. I think you can find better value there, um, whether it's a T Higgins, um, if Keenan Allen slips by. A.J. Brown seems to be one that might slip by just because people are very concerned about how run-heavy this team is. Um, but I'm happy to take him with his talent in the third round if he slips to me in that middle part of the third. And then anything you have in terms of running backs in this spot. Yeah, I think the two running backs you're going to have to decide between in this spot is either James Conner or Ezekiel Elliott in terms of the most common places that these guys are going to get drafted. Um, I'm taking Conner over Ezekiel Elliott. I'm a little down on the Cowboys offense this year just because of the lack of weapons. I'm really curious as to how this how Zeke's going to be able to flourish, especially now with Tony Pollard as well. He's still going to be very heavily involved in the offense. So uh, James Conner is a guy that I would love to take at this spot, if I, especially if I've gone the RB0 route in the first two rounds. Yep. I think James Conner is a great option. Yep, agreed. I'm with Very, you. Very uh, touchdown volume is great for um, Conner. As we move to, to round four, we've got a few players here that I think um, could potentially be moving a lot in your um, drafts. Biggest one to me is Michael Pittman. Um, I, we have him listed here as a mid fourth round pick. That's where his ADP is right now. That could change. Yeah, he yeah. he could he could continue to move up your boards where he's more of a guy that's available in round three. Um, to me, when you're looking at Keenan Allen, AJ Brown, um, that's where I have Michael Pittman. So if he ends up in, in the mid round in mid round three, like that is about where I value him. So that wouldn't shock me. But um, other guys that we're looking at there are the two rook. I shouldn't say the two rookies. The rookie, Brees Hall, um, is someone I'm looking at there. But I'll, uh, Travis Etienne is yeah. someone I'm really high on that's in that spot too. And then Deontay Johnson is a guy that can give you, if you went, let's say you you started with a um, Derrick Henry. Uh, let's go, if you started Derrick Henry, Alvin Kamara, let's say, for example, because there's there's guys that are going pretty wide receiver heavy early on yeah. and surprised you. Then I'm probably going to get Deontay as my second wide receiver or potentially, depending on how things go, more than likely my second wide receiver um, as a guy that give me a good floor. So that would make me feel a little bit better. Yeah, this is a spot where I'm probably, probably going to be looking at wide receiver. I think if I'm taking, uh, if I have round a picks round or five to eight, mm -hmm. I think uh, reaching on someone like Cortland Sutton is an option for me here. Yep. Um, I really like him this year. And even... Um, if Pittman doesn't fall to you and you do need a receiver, I think DJ Moore is okay to take in this spot as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, this is a spot, like I said, there's going to be some reaching. Um, I think we find that from this. If you have a pick five to eight in your drafts, I find myself reaching as I get a little farther down the, yeah. the board. Uh, round five, have a few options here. I really like Brandon Cooks. Yeah, me too. I think he's very reliable. He's, uh, of course, very reliable, proven it over the course of his career. Uh, and the... Floor for him is very high. Um, I think if Davis Mills continues to play, which he played at a pretty, pretty, pretty good level, like I, and Brandon Cooks is the clear guy there. Like, mm, I, especially with Nico Collins out. has a long way to go. Mechie out. I think Cooks is someone that you can really rely on and just put in your lineup whenever he's healthy, no problem. Dalton Schultz. This is kind of the the top. Yeah. The, this is the pretty much exclusively picks five to eight is when I find myself being being able to justify taking uh, Dalton Schultz. That's This is usually where he's going. Last one I had was Allen Robinson too. Yeah, um, I think you hit on all the receivers I would be looking at at this point. To be honest, there's I'm not looking at running back in this round. Um, yeah, it's gross. It's, it's, it's bad. Like Elijah Mitchell maybe or A.J. Dillon I know Ty likes a lot this year. I don't know. I'm not really seeing too many running backs that are going to fall in this area for you. That'll be worth it. I think it's better to just stock up on receivers at this point. And Tyler listed all the ones that have that are really on my mind. So yeah, I guess I'm more Cooks thinking, for sure would be my number one in the fifth round at, between five and eight. 
Yeah, I think by round five, just make sure you have, I would say, make sure you have two running backs. Dylan's yeah. Dylan's someone I, I definitely like. Uh, round six, we're looking at Jalen. I'm looking at Jalen Hurts and Clyde edwards yeah. That's like exclusively for me. Clyde is starting to fall. I get it with the Isaiah Pacheco um, excitement. I still think Clyde in the sixth round in this offense is is someone I'm certainly willing to draft. And then this is my sweet spot for Jalen Hurts. Um, this is, the, picks five to eight is where I'm, I'm able to to target Jalen Hurts and in round six. I think it's really good value. Um, that's usually right before we see a little bit of a run on QBs when it comes to like the uh, Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott, Tom Brady, and he he's he to me yeah. Hurts represents a tear break. So I really like targeting him in that spot. Yeah, I really like uh, Darnell Mooney and Allen Robinson in this spot. I think Darnell Mooney's going to get just a ton of targets this year just because the offense that he's in with not too many weapons or mouths to feed um, around him that are as skilled as him. And then Allen Robinson, too. Um, probably the first season he's going to have, I would say, maybe quote-unquote a real quarterback throwing him the ball after being with Jacksonville and Chicago for his whole career. So uh, those are the two guys I'm looking at at this point. And I know T-Mac doesn't really agree with me, but if you do need a quarterback or you want a quarterback in this round, I really don't see a problem taking Russell Wilson um, at this spot. This offense is going to be electric this year, and the defenses in, in this division really aren't that great, especially the secondaries, apart from like the Chargers. So, um, yeah, I really like I, – I don't mind Wilson at – at six or in the sixth round around here, six, eight, yeah, six, nine. But you're still taking Hertz before you take Russ. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. I would look for Hertz in the fifth round, but yeah, for sure. Um round seven. This is my my reaching round big time. <laughs> um DeAndre Hopkins is like the only guy in terms of ADP. I'm like, okay, if my team's in a good place, I've really addressed, you know, through the first six rounds, I got three running backs and three wide receivers. I feel really good about about where I'm at in terms of depth of those positions. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm waiting on quarterback and tight end until the end and taking flyers on guys like Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence. Um, and then yeah. at tight end, I'm looking at like, a, you know, Cole Komet, Gerald Everett. Then to me, I can go get Hopkins as a guy that sits on my bench. And then when, it, when he's back, I know he's the number one option. So that would be really nice to feel um, in terms of later in the year because you're, you're playing to win your league and you got to do that in the play, uh, come playoff time. Um, so the other guys, though, I'm. This is where I'm reaching. If I don't feel comfortable, Elijah Moore, and then even Rashad Penny with Kenneth mm-hmm. Walker's injury. Um, Penny is someone. If you're if you're shallow at running back, then Penny is someone that you know you can you can put in as your RB two um, if you've really got the wide receiver position handled well. Yeah. No, I uh, I agree. The guy's really going at this at this mark of the draft in the seventh round. You know, you're looking at guys like you said, D Hop, Cordero Patterson. I'm not really high on Drake London, uh, TJ Hawkinson, even at tight end. I think there's even better options at tight end that you can get a little bit later on that um, T-Mac kind of uh, touched on. But the guys, I, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Like I'm I'm going to be reaching at this point for running back. You know, I've talked the last couple rounds saying that I'm looking at wide receivers in these spots. But I think Devin Singletary and even Rashad Penny are two guys I'd look at uh, here. Maybe being a little undervalued right now just because of the unknown of these backfields at the moment. So those are guys I think you can jump on if you're, the rest of your team is quite solidified. If you have good receivers and running backs at this point, um, go for value. Yeah. Round eight. Uh, this one's big time for me upside. I'm going to look for, cause I mentioned, I've talked to, we've talked about a lot of floor guys, or at least I've mentioned that a lot of guys are like high floor. Uh, give me Trey Lance around eight. Uh, I'd be excited yeah. about that if I haven't had the co- address the quarterback position. Um, the outcomes can be very wide scaled for Lance this year, but in that scale, there's top six QB to me. Um, and then Traylon Burks, another one, low floor, um, high ceiling. I'm going to chase that in round eight. Um, those are kind of those are the two guys that stick out the most in where, where we're picking. Yeah, I think this round for me, um, if you took a, if you ended up reaching on a running back in the last round, uh, I would think there'd be a lot, still a lot of receiver depth. With guys like Alan Lazard, even, um, and then even oh, there's one more guy I just saw. Oh, Ayuk too. Ayuk Brandon Ayuk too. I think is also a good spot. Eighth round is right where his ADP is, so he'd kind of just fall in your lap at this point. I think those are both really good options at this point in the draft. So yeah, all right. Well, we covered the, we covered the first eight rounds. Usually, you get any later, you you're pretty much, you know, you're not going according to ADP. You're more looking at guys you like in the later rounds. Yeah. Not afraid to reach on guys. So we'll cover till round eight. I'm excited to get to. Um, in our next video, we'll do nine to twelve. It's our favorite place to draft yeah. from. So I'm excited to talk about that and the teams you can construct from that uh, part of your drafts. Let us know in the comments what you guys think of these players, where you guys are drafting this year. 
um, who you think you're targeting in round one. I know I love to hear about you, your guys' running back wide receiver philosophy early on. We get that a lot in the Discord. Um, if you guys are in the Discord, that link is down below in the description. Make sure you enter our giveaway, free jersey of your choice, and $100 of um, $100 of site credit on Owner's Box. Again, all you have to do is subscribe and send us a DM on Twitter with that subscription, subscription uh, or message me on our Discord channel. And you could get a Tyler Algier jersey delivered right to your front door. I'll, I'll hand deliver it. Someone, if someone wins this contest and takes, picks Tyler Algier, I will hand deliver the jersey. Absolutely. Who's going to pay for that? Who's going to fly you out? What? I'll do it on my own dime. <laughs> Respect. Um, I would not order a Tyler Algier jersey if I were you. <laughs> There's a, the world is your oyster. Algier shouldn't be the, the guy. Shouldn't be your the Falcons oyster. jerseys are not really that big of a... No, yeah, these new ones, they're not great. Yeah. Anyways, all right, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.